In this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about temperature split. If you run a home service business like painting, contracting, lawn care, or cleaning, your to-do list is endless. From hiring staff to mountains of paperwork, not to mention doing the actual work that pays the bills. Jobber is a mobile and online app that helps you organize your business and look professional. With Jobber, you can quote jobs, schedule your crew, invoice, and get paid all in one place. Try it free today at getjobber.com forward slash shop talk. Let's just touch on some of the things that can cause a low temperature split. In the previous video, I was talking about airflow and how if you have a very humid return air environment, then you will have a low air split. The reason is because think of an air conditioner as having X amount of output and you have to put output toward sensible and for latent. Sensible is lowering the actual number temperature and latent is lowering the amount of water in the air. So when you lower the amount of water in the air, you're not changing the temperature necessarily. So a lot of the energy in a humid environment is going to just that, removing humidity instead of lowering the air temperature. So as the humidity comes out of the air, the temperature will lower at a more rapid pace. So your split will get larger. But there's other things that cause low split. Obviously a refrigerant circuit issue like low refrigerant will cause a low split. As refrigerant depletes out of the unit, you will no longer get that solid column of liquid to the metering device. The way an AC is designed, you have a condenser and that condenser has air moving across it and you're lowering the temperature of that refrigerant until it reaches its saturation point, then it becomes a liquid. And as a liquid, it continues to cool into a subcooled state. That's why you have your subcooling. And then it flows into the indoor metering device where that device restricts flow, causes the pressure to drop, and it causes that refrigerant to boil off, sucking heat out of the air. It takes the heat from the air and uses it during the vaporization process. It needs that heat to complete the process, so it draws the heat out of the air, therefore you're comfortable inside the house. But as the refrigerant level drops, the ability for that condenser to create a solid column of liquid goes down. And after a certain point, it's no longer subcooled, it's above its saturation, and it doesn't reach the metering device as a liquid. Maybe it's partial liquid, partial gas, and maybe it's completely gas by the time the unit's almost completely out of refrigerant. So in those two states, you'll get very little of that transfer of state from the liquid to the gas because it's already been done or it never happened in the first place, turning into a liquid. Therefore, you won't have the benefit of evaporating and you won't have that cooling effect. And as your refrigerant depletes, it gets lower and lower. A lot of times it'll freeze. And the reason why it freezes is because refrigerant pressure and temperature correlate. As the pressure drops, it goes below the freezing point in saturation. And then that first little bit of the inlet tube and distributor and the evaporator start to ice up. But as it occludes airflow, it blocks more and more air. As more of the coil freezes, it actually leads to a cascading effect of freezing up the coil. Therefore, you'll have a frozen coil and uh, you'll no longer have any air conditioning at all. Typically, you'll have a pressure switch or a temperature sensor kick the system offline, but in older systems, that might not be the case. You can have the same effect with a failed metering device. If you have a TXV, and this is a common for a TXV, you'll have a power head and a bulb that has refrigerant in it. Sometimes the refrigerant starts to leak out of that bulb and the TXV will start to close off flow to the evaporator coil. Exactly the same issue as low refrigerant, except that you do have that solid column of liquid. You just have a failed metering device. The result is the same. You get lower and lower temperature split until the coil either freezes up or the TXV shuts down and the system pumps down. Hopefully a safety switch cuts it off because most modern machines will have those safety switches. Older machines may not have any safety switches at all. I've seen them run into the negative on the suction side and they just keep going until the compressor dies or as in certain cases, I've actually seen dirt get drawn into the system because of the condition surrounding the condensing unit and it becomes a horrible, horrible situation. Dirt, water, you do the math there, that system is done, you sold a new system because you can't fix a heap of you know what. I hope this helped out there guys and girls, hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys on the next one. God bless each and every one of you. Save 8% off your order at truetechtools.com by using the Shop Talk discount code.